Hi Year 10, um, I thought I'd drop you a really quick video this week to just clear up a few little misconceptions that I've had emailed to me. So the first one was about your Christmas homework, so it was your deadline to get that project finished. It was a really important deadline to get that work done. When we come back to school we're going to be hitting the ground running with this new project and trying to do a little bit of catch up. And therefore all that work that we did at school it's really important that you get that finished because that's going to be a really strong body for you so where is it so i thought i'd show you my team so you could see everything so it's down here it's called coursework for january if you click on coursework for january you can see my little post there saying you needed to get it all done over christmas and then if you go to files inside files you will find a word document which is here if you then click on that word document it will load up on your screen and on it, you will find the large list of every single task that you should have done since starting this course back in September. Here we go. So you can see there all the work to complete for September. Now, once you'd fully done that, we were on to our composition. Now, this is either for both my classes, 10C and 10D. It's exactly the same for both of you. We were meant to be going on to designing our composition. Now we may still go on to that, but what I wanted to do was we hadn't done any of our lockdown pack. Now our lockdown pack was really important. Assessment objective three is drawing. I purposely didn't do a drawing exam with you in year 10 like we normally do because I knew that this was going to happen at some point and it felt a much better use of your time doing a high quality drawing than trying to do stuff with lots of different media that you don't have at home. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to my other camera view so you can see this lockdown pack and what it is that I actually want you to do this week. OK, so this is the pack you were all sent home with. It had a 2B pencil in for tonal drawing, a rubber, it had an information sheet and then if you went inside it, so I'll just open this up for you. So it had a sheet giving you some basic tips on proportion and how to outline things. There was some A4 and A3 cartridge paper that you'll need to do your drawing on. And then there was a selection of images that are actually connected to your project. So I don't mind which one of those A3 images you draw. It is going to be your choice. What I might do, though, is give you a very quick demo on how I would get started. So I'm going to choose the shoe drawing. I like the shoe drawing. And I'm going to take my A3 piece of paper. Now, the first thing you can see is I printed out on your images for you lots of guides to grid up. Now what that means is if you lay your paper over the top of each other you can draw these lines over so following where each line is and it's a much quicker way of getting a grid on your paper without having to do lots and lots let me just go down here without you having to do lots and lots of measurements. Now I think I'm staying on the screen I might be slightly off the screen so yeah, so just very quickly draw them up. And then the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go and find yourself a long ruler. If you can't find yourself a long ruler, because I'm very aware some of us might not have long rulers, you could always just use, here we go, this is a calendar, okay? But it's got a nice, firm, straight edge. You might not have a calendar, you might have a magazine, you might have a tray, anything like that at all. Just go and find something with a straight edge so you can now join your lines up. Okay, so you can see, there we go, I've come back now, draw my grid lines on using that. So this makes it a lot easier now when you're trying to get the shape right. So let me start with this line here. So I can see that this line here is the top of the shoe going up into the laces. So I'm going to start in that square so I can see the square correlates. So you can see it's going to go through that line it's now going to take me up to here so I'm just drawing out the initial outline I'm not doing any more than that now I'm not going to do the whole shoe because you'd be watching me for a really long time that you probably would have switched off let me draw this line in here so you can see that that line you can see it crosses through there so I've got to make it correlate then it comes down keep it do not press on yet the reason being you will need to rub this out you will make mistakes I'm going to make mistakes and I've been drawing a lot longer than you, okay? So that's why we draw in pencil. Keep it light. So you can see I'm completely following this line up to here. Then let's go back down here to this shoe bit. So you can see this line here coming through and bending up. So you can, I can see that that's going to go in there. It's going to come through those. It's almost going to go along that and up there. Then it's going to go round. 
and it's going to join up there. It's almost a double line thickness, so it kind of goes through there, through there, it possibly should have gone there, then together. So I'm starting to get these lines. I'm not going to worry about the dot detail yet. The lace as well. So I've got a lace going on there. If I just take this line a little bit further up, because it would go up to here, because this then is where that wonderful lace slides down, comes around, it bends in here. It's that lovely curvaceous line which kind of comes up here. Over here we're going in. That's where it's bending round, going through here, crossing through here, then this lace goes through all three, up here. Then I've got this lace here bending down and looping round, so that is coming through this box, going into this box. So about here, bending round, going through those triangles, coming up to right about here. I can just about, I can't really see much on the outside, but I can definitely see it here. I did, if you're still going to see it on the A3, I did print you off some smaller, oops, I just dropped it on the floor, some smaller A4 versions, which are a bit darker in tone, if that helps you. I also did it in A3, just to help you get the proportions right. Then I've got these laces, so I can see these laces here. Let's start with this bottom lace down here, which goes over the top, which goes round into... This section here, which goes up, and then this lace comes in, which makes me realise I've got to draw this piece of leather up here to put my laces into, then it disappears behind that lace. In a moment I'll get a rubber and rub out any of those bits I don't want. There's a bit of another lace coming up behind, so I'm just taking my time. This lace is almost on this line here, so it'll come out, it'll come up to there. I can see there's this lace in there, you know, feel free to, to draw on these sheets if it's a bit faint and you can't see them, so there's a bit of a lace in there. There is this, whilst I struggle on that, I can see it on there hanging down, so I'm going to get that just drawn in. Okay, so you can see then I need to go into like almost this square here, so there's the laces. So there's no tone, there's no anything, all I'm drawing in right now is the basic outline to make sure my proportions are correct and are super accurate. So that is step number one. Draw up your grid, draw up your outlines. Okay, year 10, you might be able to see by this, I've actually done this demonstration twice now, but there's something going on with my phone, so I've changed phones. Um, what did I cover in the other ones? So I said the first thing you need to do is when you did your guidelines, you need to rub your guidelines out before you apply the tone, because once you've applied the tone, if you done any light areas you're going to be able to see your guidelines through it so make sure your guidelines are rubbed out if in the process of rubbing out your guidelines you remove some of the object that's fine just draw it back in then the last thing you need to do is apply the tone now the tone is basically turning your image black and white um, tone is light to dark so you can see light areas to dark areas so it's all those different colors that we've got if you turn it black and white they show up as different tones so at no point should anybody be submitting me an image where basically, so if I just work on this bit of metal here, look at that, you do a dark outline and that is it. Now the reason you draw in these dark outlines you have done since you were young is because everything has an edge. You can see the edge of that paper there. But the reason it's dark is because it's a shadow, okay? If I hold these things over, over the top of each other, each time I'm creating another layer of shadow. That is what's making this dark line. So this dark has to go from dark, then taking the pressure off my pencil, it's going to get lighter. Now don't be afraid to go too dark because you can use a rubber to rub it out. That's the whole point of it. I'd rather you go too dark and bring some back in than I have a drawing that's just full of lots of mid-tones, okay? So that's absolutely fine. I've got my rubber there. I do want to lighten that up a bit. I was just trying to show you that for the demonstration. So you can see where this on this picture has gone over the top. I'm using my smaller picture now because it's got better tonal qualities. So I can see it's going to be darker under there. It's going to be darker at the edge because it's an edge, but it's much lighter here on top. So again, I would go dark to light in there. Where the stitches, I'd use my nice sharp pencil and I'd get these drawn in. I'm constantly working on it. I'm constantly thinking, okay, actually this area 
over here so let me just do it in here so you can see on the picture here it's really dark so I'm going to go in there and make that beautifully dark in there then I've got the lace and the lace is going to go from the dark where it's overlapping here and here then go much lighter where it's lying on the top now with the lace you can see I've started to do some up here I've gone from light to dark but the lace has this wonderful textural quality to it as laces would do so I would apply some tone I'd probably then go back over with almost like a crisscross pattern for the lace but then I wouldn't be afraid to work back on top of that pattern to apply so again I might just apply some crisscross in here you can see where it's disappearing out and it's got that texture on but then I'm going to go back over and I'm going to apply some tone onto it so, it's, so it starts to blend in and it starts to become a single picture you can see I'm leaving these lighter bits here it's where the light's catching it there now as you're doing it you might feel a little bit oh it's not working getting a bit disheartened that's because you haven't finished don't see a picture as a tiny little square a picture is a whole when your eyes start to bring it together so just keep going on it if you're following these rules of it going from dark okay, take my pencil off to light it's going to go a bit darker but then I can see there's this lighter line over the top again I can see down here it starts to go a little bit lighter and then it starts to go darker where it wraps around the back I can see there's this texture on it so I'm going to actually draw some of the texture lines in there everyone has different ways of applying pencil as well some of you probably are much smoother with your tone some of you might be more I know that I draw with lines almost energetic lines you're going to find your own style and that's okay as long as your proportions are correct in size, as long as you are applying tone and texture to your picture, how you apply that, so whether you've got smoother marks or more energetic marks, that's completely fine because that is what you're trying to find. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully, was it third or fourth time lucky that it's now saved so I can get it uploaded and on the video. So really clearly, I've shown you how to um, find your work, I've talked to you about this large A3 tonal drawing that I want to do to a really high standard. Because I want it to be such a high standard, I think I put the deadline on there for Monday. I'm actually going to change it to a week Wednesday. So not this Wednesday, tomorrow, a week afterwards. So you've got plenty of time to get this to a high quality. However, on Wednesday, I'll talk to you more about it then, but we might be starting our new project. But I will talk to you about that on Wednesday. For now, I want by Wednesday this A3 drawing uploaded. The work you've completed in your book, that's fine. You keep hold of it but this needs to be uploaded. Please make sure it's uploaded, otherwise I will start to chase you and call you, okay? Hope you are well. Hopefully I will see you all soon. Email me with any worries or issues and good luck.